Hey, what's up? And welcome to Hack My Growth. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to use schema.org. All right, let's go. Thanks so much for checking this video out. If this is your first time, or maybe you've been watching a while and haven't yet hit subscribe, we would love you to join our community. We post new content each week, and our goal really with this whole show is to help you hack your marketing and your inbound sales processes. We're gonna share you some tips and tricks and information that we've learned along the way, and it's gonna help you really get the most out of everything you're doing online. So Google is on this mission to change from strings to things, okay? And that's a technical way of saying, you know, putting something in a database and having it become like a number and an element as opposed to actually understanding what that concept is. And this is really the whole idea behind semantic search. And we've talked about semantic SEO on some of the last episodes. Maybe you've even heard that term. And really it's a fancy term for contextual search, really trying to better understand why people are searching, what they're searching, really their intent behind it. That way that Google can deliver the best possible solution. Now, in order to do this, they need data and they need a data that actually helps them better understand content on a website, different elements on a website. And one way that we can do that is through the use of structured data. Now, if everybody just had their own structured data, it wouldn't be really helpful to Google and the other search engines. We need to have a standardized way of really structuring data and marking up our websites, kind of like HTML or CSS, like these different types of coding languages. And so that's how schema.org was birthed. So schema is a standardized and simplified structured data process. It tells us how to structure certain parts of data, whether it be uh, a movie or an image or a product or a review that somebody might have gotten on a website. And what it does, is it helps us simplify structured data. So again, what's structured data? It helps Google and the other search engines better understand their data, brackets, content in its index. So by adding structured data, you're actually giving search engines better information about your site, what's on that site, how they should really categorize the site, and really to understand what the different elements on your page are about and how they're actually helping tell your story and helping the users in the long run. So if you're not using structured data, Pay attention because this, this video is really gonna help you get started and it's a really cool way to add a ton of value to your site from a search engine's point of view and it can help you rank a lot better. So using schema.org can be intimidating. If you go to that site, it seems very technical. Uh, I, I don't come out of a technical background natively. I had to learn through the process of doing a lot of the things that I do day to day. And so if you go there at first, you may just really feel overwhelmed. It may not seem kind of crazy. You don't really, it's hard to use, right? Well, it doesn't have to be. And so we're gonna walk through a simplified step of how to use schema.org. And we're gonna show some screenshots and really where you can pull this information, as well as a simplified way to create this and a really, really cool tool that uh, I will walk you through as well that, that'll kind of give you just the structures where you just need to kind of change out some information. So first thing you need to do is determine your schema type. Now there's a number of different types of schema. And so let's take a look at some of the options available at schema.org. All right, so this is schema.org. It is a site that is founded by Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, Yandex, and the schema.org vocabularies are developed by an open community uh, process. So this is a really an open, open source project uh, where people are, are working together in order to have a standardized language for structured data. Now, if we look here at the schemas, you're gonna see that there's uh, a number of uh, different types of schemas. So we can browse the full hierarchy, uh, one page per type, the full list, uh, or we can jump down to the most uh, commonly used types of schema, like creative works. So this would be like a book or a movie or a piece of music, things of that nature. Um, maybe it's a video or an image object or an event, or they've got stuff for medical, organizations, persons, places, location, business, products. Reviews. So there's, these are some of the most common uses of schema, probably where you'll find yourself using schema the most often. Um, as you dive down into these, they'll give you some uh, ideas of what they should look like. So if we took over here and we looked at a video, let's say we were embedding this video into our website and we wanted to use schema, this is what it looks like. So it's a thing. So we're talking person, place, or thing, right? It's creative work, it's a media object, and it's a video object. So we have different types of schema for all those different layers that are involved. So people, the text, the director, who the music's done by, thumbnails, this is all stuff that we can mark up using uh, schema.org and structured data language. So 
you can see that there's a lot of different options. Now, don't be super overwhelmed and say, oh my goodness, I've got to create all of these different options. You don't. Um, you don't have to have every single one of these in there. Uh, but like we always talk about, the more information you can give, the better. Um, and then as you get to the bottom, they're actually going to give you uh, an idea of what they look like. So here's it without markup. Here it is with uh, microdata. Here it is with RF, uh, RDFA. And then this is my favorite with JSON-LD. Um, so they actually give you a good idea of exactly what it would look like. They also show you another version right here. This, this following video has this much popularity. Um, microdata rich data format, and JSON-LD. So schema.org, there's tons of different schemas that you can look through, uh, tons of different um, you know, things that we can mark up. So uh, thing, you know, very common, right? Uh, we've also got person, and we've got thing, you know, places. So uh, spend some time on here and just get yourself familiar. Don't be overwhelmed. There's a lot of information on this website, and it's easy to get overwhelmed, but take some time and get yourself to be a little bit more familiar with schema.org. So after you've defined the types of schema you want to be using, the next step is to map out how you're going to structure this data. As you can see, there's a lot of different options under some of these different types, and you may not have all the content, so you don't want to force it, but you do want to provide as much information as possible. So here's an example of how we might want to map out a certain element using schema markup. So when it comes to structured data, Google wants you to use it and they've got a ton of resources available to help you get a better understanding of the types of data that you should be using and want to be using and the types of data that you need to map out when it comes to building out your, your schema markup. So let's say, you know, right here is a great example and they're using JSON-LD to uh, mark up a company and describe, describing their contact information. So really, you just want to start thinking this from a practical standpoint. Uh, it's an organization, right? So we know that. Uh, and we have their website, we have their company name, and a contact point. So it's phone number and the type of context customer service. You could also have another contact point that would be maybe sales. So what are those pieces of information that are absolutely critical to your business uh, that also are have or have the ability to be marked up. So if we went over here to schema.org and maybe we could say um, business. We want to look at marking up our local business for schema. Now we can use this right here as kind of a starting point, right? These are the types of properties, the expected type that Google is looking like is it tax, is it create work URL? Um, but you know, address. Well, yeah, we definitely want our address in there. Um, do we have a contact point like we just saw before? Have you won any awards? Uh, and it's also really good, a cheat sheet right here. Come down here to the bottom <laughs> and see, you know, let's uh, let's see just um, right here. This is a good example of just a, an address that we can mark up, right? So what are the types of information they're looking at? Well, we can look right here. Address, region, locality, the street address, a description, a name, a telephone number. So those are the things that you want to start with saying, okay, these are the types of, of information that I need that I can also mark up really well uh, using schema.org. I always like to scroll down to the bottom and look at examples because it starts to give you a little bit better understanding of actually how to use it. If you start scrolling down here, you can get very overwhelmed by the number of options that you have. And so it's, it's easy to see how they kind of suggest you to use it. Google also has a URL for the structured data guidelines. It's right up here. Um, it's in the developer section of Google and they give you a technical guideline. Uh, they recommend that you use JSON-LD um, and they'll go into the quality guidelines, the relevance, all the kind of information around schema and some more best practices as well that, that we may not cover in this video. But the third step we want to do is choose our approach. Now my recommended approach is JSON-LD and the reason why it's the easiest. You don't have to be a super heavy coder to really just, you can just drop it anywhere in a page and the search engine is going to be able to crawl it, understand it. You can also use like some native markup right in your HTML. Um, if you do that, it can impact the CSS. So you got to make sure that you you have it look right. You know, if you've maybe tried one of these data plugins in the past, structured data plugins, maybe on WordPress, you get this weird box. It just doesn't look very good. It looks really just just it's got a bad user experience. So JSON LD really gets away from the having to deal with the UX side of things and really just allows you to mark up your data in a way. So here's a cool tool that I found. Uh, that we use uh, to help us structure our data. And it really helps you really just uh, see 
how it, the data needs to be structured. So let's take a look at that. One of my favorite quotes is, good artists borrow, great artists steal. Um, one of the best things you can do is see what other people are doing and use that as a model for what you can do as well. This is one of my favorite websites. It is Steal Our Jason LD. And it's structured data made simple, just like they say. So basically, over here, they've got a number of different commonly used markups. And they write the scheme out for you. All you need to do is change your information. So again, let's say we are doing a video. Pretty straightforward. You would just copy this script and then you would change out you know, your name of the video, the description, the, the, the thumbnail, when it was uploaded, uh, how long the video is, where the content can be found, where it's embedded at, and how many you know, interactions were with this video. Or you can do this one with the author attribution added. So just copy and paste this and exchange out their information for your information and now you've got some really nice clean JSON LD markup ready for you to use. Awesome website, highly recommend you use it because just like their name says, you can steal their JSON LD. The fourth step is actually adding it to your site. So depending on the type of CMS you're using, uh, will really determine on how you're gonna actually integrate this. But uh, really one of the easiest ways to do is just go to that page and you drop it into that page. You can also use Google Tag Manager. That's another great option. We use that most of the time when we're implementing uh, schema markup where you can set some rules, but that can get a little bit more complex and we will create a video on that later. But if you're just an average website owner, maybe average marketer uh, who's getting into SEO a little bit and wants to know how to do it, just go to that page and open up the text editor side. You don't want to paste it into like the visual editor because then you're just going to see the code. And you just want to drop that JSON LD high in the page. Uh, that way it can get crawled. Now beware if you do that, there are certain plugins that might pull that code and like the snippets like of a blog post and such. So make sure that it's on the page in an area where uh, it might not get pulled. Again, this is probably not the best practice, but it's a great way to get started of putting it on there. Uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of this, I highly recommend using uh, Google Tag Manager. So one of the easiest ways to implement schema on your website is actually Tag Manager. Tag Manager can seem a little, um, Scary at first because there's tags and triggers and variables, but once you start to use it, it actually is very intuitive and it helps you keep all your tags in one place. So you don't have to log in and out of your website and try to put stuff in your header. Or do I put it in my footer? Or do I put it both? You know, there's a lot of those questions. If you've got your tag installed, all you got to do now is come to Tag Manager and beginning begin to add your tags. So to add a tag, especially JSONLD, you would just right here open up these tags and create new. Uh, create, choose the type of tag you want to do, and here you would just use custom HTML, and you could use any of these uh, scripts, markups, right, and just drop them right in here. As you see, it starts to highlight itself like it would to be a code. Now, one of the triggers that's default in Tag Manager is all pages, but you can also set it to different pages. Let's say you only wanted this to show on your contact us page. If you want to show on all pages, click that, it would fire on all pages. You can actually add your own trigger, um, and you do it by page view. <laughs> Let's see, it's pretty pretty easy here. All pages, some pages. Click an element that contains, or you could do uh, click URL contains or equals. Let's say equals, and you just put in your you know contact uh, us page link here, and you'd add that. And then what would happen is you hit save uh, contact. Now, anybody time somebody visited your contact us page, it would trigger this schema markup. Maybe you have a video there. And then Google would also be able to see that as well. Uh, hit save, hit publish, make a little note that you've published it. And there you go. A simple way to use Google Tag Manager to implement schema markup. All right, so after this, we want to test it. And Google has a structured data tool that we can actually go and pull our site like Google would. And we can see, do we have any errors? You know, we want to make sure that our structured data is well optimized and it's also not showing up any errors that's being crawled the right way always test before you push this stuff live and make sure that it is working the way you want it to so let's take a look at google's structured data markup tool so once you've added your markup to your site you're going to want to use this structured data testing tool it's by google it helps you to see uh, how your data is marked up if it's valid if you've got any errors um, and also uh, just to make sure that's all in there correctly so just paste a link in here and run a test so it's crawling the site now and it's looking for triggers and tags. So this site has two, um, two instances of structured data. The one is a breadcrumb list. So right here they're just calling it out, breadcrumb list, breadcrumb list. And then it also has a web page markup. So if you got a website, this is great. Here's the description, here's all the information. 
um, some of the things it's looking for, oh, hey, there's no name, there's no uh, image. It's not like they're gonna like get dinged or whatnot for this, but it's something that, that Google is expecting to see. So you could help your markup a little bit better if you would go in and, and add some of these in here. Uh, but this is the way you test it, uh, just Google structured data testing tool. The last thing you're gonna do is monitor. So after you've added the structured data, you wanna monitor its impact. One of the areas that you wanna do is you wanna add an annotation in your Google Analytics. So inside of Google Analytics, you open it up and you can just, on, on the timeline of your, your search traffic, put a little note in there so you know when you've added structured data to your site. Uh, another thing you wanna do is make sure you're monitoring this in Google Search Console. So let's take a little bit of a deeper look on how that actually looks from a practical standpoint. So inside Google Search Console is how you can monitor your structured data. Uh, this is the old version of Search Console. I haven't been able to find this yet in the new and improved version of Search Console. They're still adding more features to that. You can always go here and check it out. It's very, very cool what they're doing. But under Search Appearance, you can go to Structured Data. Here it's going to show you all the instances that you have on your site and are there any items with errors. So right now, you know, we've got website instances, organization instances, blog posts, video objects, things of that nature. And so we're able to here to see, okay, you know, we see an increase or we see a dip. Uh, do we have any errors? Do we have anything that we need to fix? Uh, this is where we can monitor and keep up with our structured data using schema.org and making sure that, hey, we are having valid markup sources. You hear, see here, it's everything here is, is validated by schema.org and Google's happy with my site. It's gonna understand my content better and it's going to get more out of my site. So use, make sure that you're hooked up to the Search Console. It's a very important tool if you're doing anything in the realm of digital marketing or search. It's gonna allow you to see a little bit more what's happening behind the scenes with your website as it uh, interacts with Google. So if you follow these five steps, you can start to use structured data using schema.org on your website. This is a powerful way to add a tremendous amount of value when it comes to the search engines, letting them understand your content and letting them get a little bit deeper of a context about who you are, what your site's trying to promote. If you got any questions, please comment below. We would love to continue the conversation. If you get stuck along the way too, we're here to help you. We'd love to just dive in, give you some, uh, some, some helpful tips and, and maybe hold your hand along the way. That way you can begin to use this. One of the most powerful things you can do for your website, a lot of people don't do it because it seems hard. Yes, there are some sites that do it natively, maybe put like the website schema in, but there's a lot of other things you can mark up. And when you use it the right way, I, I, you're gonna see great results in search in the long run. Until next time, happy marketing.